this dish, you need the freshest herbs possible. I've just got some basil, mint, and I've got some chopped parsley, which I'll add as well. Don't use anything harsh, like, for example, rosemary. You want a fairly delicate flavour, because ocean trout is actually a fairly delicate fish. It's nowhere near as strong as Tasmanian salmon. Lovely fish nonetheless. But I do want to chop this reasonably finely. I've got a bit excited here, actually. I think I've got enough for about 300 people. Expecting a lot of people around for lunch, I think. All right, so when that's nice and fine, just grab a bowl. Let me just put some of that in there. Put all of it in there, actually. <laughs> or most of it anyway. To that I'm going to add some zest of lemon. Just with one of these little zesters really makes life very simple. Because I want it really fine. Because I just want to perfume this with lemon at this stage. All right, so about half a lemon I reckon. The zest, I mean. Then just mix that up and add some seasoning. Freshly ground pepper and salt. Let's mix it together well. All right, next, we've got our piece of fish, of course. So I'll just grab this tray here, and I've also got some melted butter here. Now, to the melted butter, I'm going to add about the juice of half a lemon and mix it in fairly well. Then we'll put the piece of fish on the tray. Just coat it with that butter. Just a small amount. And then we just sprinkle over these herbs and press those in. I want a fairly even crust there, so be a bit careful with this step. All right, just press that in really well. Maybe the smallest amount of butter around it, just to make sure that it doesn't catch on the bottom. And then we put it into a very hot oven. And when I say very hot, full bore. And at that temperature, with that reasonably thin piece of ocean trout, it should only take about three minutes. All right, so when that's almost ready, I've just got some beans which I'm just going to throw into boiling water. You could use snow peas, you could use any green veg. But just make sure that your water is lightly salted and it's rapidly boiling. All right, now comes the big moment. Let's have a look at the fish. Oh, that looks good. Beautiful smell of those fresh herbs that they've just been sort of, I suppose, toasted, you'd really say, you know, because it's been in the hot oven and it's been roasted fairly lightly. But they smell wonderful. Really do. All right, those beans should be about ready. Let's have a look. Yeah, looking good. Looking good. Just drain them well. I don't want any water on the plate. I'll just get rid of that pot Run for two seconds because I just want to put this lemon butter back on just to heat up a little. I think I better arrange this a little bit more neatly, don't you? I just dumped them on the plate and I was going to leave them like that. It doesn't have to be all neat and tidy, kids. It really doesn't. I mean, we're not talking about Nouvelle Cuisine there, but we do want it to be reasonably neat. Now just careful with this because you put it in the oven, it could stick to the bottom. We don't want that to happen. And on top of that, I will just get rid of that one bean. It just looks out of place, doesn't it? On top of that, I'm just going to put 
a small amount of this lemon butter. Right, that is a very light, very fresh dish. I'm right in the middle of the vineyard at Linden Dairy at Red Hill. Now, as you can see, this is their vineyard, and obviously the birds quite fancy the grapes too. Actually, Linden Dairy's a great country house hotel, and last night I had the most beautiful meal in their restaurant, and it was Moroccan-inspired, which started me thinking about Morocco. And I thought I'd do this lovely dish, which is one of my old favourites, which is particularly for you vegetarians. It's a Moroccan salad of grilled vegetables and couscous, and it's got some really lovely harissa yoghurt. And the thing that I like about it, because we all know that I can be a bit lazy like the next bloke, is it's a pretty easy dish to do. Good stuff. All right, well, just like my grill, I'm just using a ridge grill. You, of course, could use your barbecue. And the couscous, I'm using the instant couscous, which is pretty terrific stuff. In fact, it's so much easier to use than rice or pasta. I actually use it with other dishes as well. Now, to make that, I just use one cup of orange juice, and put that on the heat, and a couple of tablespoons of good olive oil. And we just heat that up. Right, now while that's happening, let's think about the vegetables. I've done a variety of vegetables for this, but I'll just oil the grill first. Which I hope is going. We'll just double check that. The wind, the wind. There's some great things about cooking outside. Wind is not one of them. Yeah, no, that's working. So we'll just leave that for a second. And I've just, just come over and have a look here, Noel. I've just done a variety of vegetables. I've red capsicum, green capsicum, eggplant, some sweet potato, you can use pumpkin, of course, and some zucchini. Now, I've just cut them reasonably thinly. I've peeled the sweet potato, of course. As I said, you really could use pumpkin, you could use lots of other varieties of vegetables, but I don't think it suits things like cauliflower and broccoli because you are cooking it on a grill. But we'll just add a couple of each of these to this grill which, as we see, could be a little bit hotter, but it'll heat up. It'll be all right. Make sure you've got a mixture of them. And then we'll add some seasoning, salt and pepper. Now, because this is a Moroccan dish, if you liked, you then could sprinkle on something like cumin, allspice powder, anything like that to add some flavour. I don't think it needs it because I'm using a harissa yoghurt, which has got some flavour. So, you know, sometimes you can get a bit excited and put too much. Now, just a little bit more oil on the top of this to enable it to cook a bit faster, and away we go. Now, the other thing that I forgot in my mixture for my... I'm a bit, a bit forgetful today. I just was going to put a little bit of cinnamon in this olive oil and orange juice. So I'll just add that, about one teaspoon. All right, harissa yogurt. Now, harissa is this mixture here which is a mixture of chilies and spices. Now, in the fact sheet, if you want it, I'll put the recipe for you. But this is bought. You can buy it in lots of delis and supermarkets. It's a lot easier and it's really very tasty. But as I said, if you want to make it yourself, I'll put it in the fact sheet for you. And I'm just going to cut it back a bit by adding some plain yogurt to it. So two or three tablespoons of just plain yogurt and as much or as little of that as you like. I put quite a bit in because I really like it. In Morocco, they actually use harissa as their basic spice additive, so they would serve that straight on the side. But I actually like the idea of it being a little bit mellow. And I will just now taste that. Oh, that is good. Oh, that, no, that is good. You must try that, that is brilliant, like it. All right, our veggies, see how we're going. With a bit of luck, this grill may get going. Oh, it's starting, it's starting. It's 
certainly doesn't need any more oil. There's plenty of oil on that. But just keep turning these over. Because I want them blistered a bit. And some real marks on it would be nice as well. All right, our couscous. I know I'm darting around a bit here, but, you know, excuse me for that. I'm trying to do ten things at once. As soon as this comes to the boil, which is very, very close now, we then whiz it off. You shouldn't be watching that, Noel. You know that it will never boil when you're watching. My mother used to say that to me about the water, and it's true, isn't it? While you're watching it, it doesn't boil. But it's going to boil any second. Trust me. I'll just turn a couple of these things over. Yeah, now it's boiling. Finally. Finally. <laughs> that was a ten-year plan, that. We just pour that onto exactly one cup of instant couscous. I think on the packet it's called couscous rapide, just to confuse everyone. And to that I will then add just some raisins or sultanas. Separate them, please. You don't want big lumps of them. Not too many. You know better. One, two, three, four, eleven. <laughs> Telling lies, just whatever you feel like. Right, and just mix that in really well. And then just put that to the side. Right, let's see how our veggies are going. Uh, looking all right. Yeah, they're starting to get some colour. All we need is the wind to die down for a few minutes and everyone, including the vegetables, will be happy. But it is starting to get some colour, which is great. You know, I don't want them black, but I do want them to have a little bit of colour because I want them the flavour of that grill. Righty-ho. Now, our couscous is looking good. You could leave it for a couple of seconds more. If No, that's, that's all right. And to that, I'm then going to add, excuse me, Noel, just for a second, smallest amount more of olive oil. Now, you don't want it to go gluggy, but you do want it to mix in really well. And just taste that as well. Just taste that as well. Now, that could sit for a couple of seconds more. Maybe a minute. Now, they're looking good. All right, let's put the salad together. Just in a nice bowl. It can be a deep one, it doesn't have to be a flat soup like this. We can put a mound of the couscous as the base. Just in a nice, reasonably even circle. It's a bit of a free-form salad, so we don't have to get excited with that. And I've just got some rocket here, which is, once again, I'm going to give some contrast to it, which we're just going to lay on the top of that. You could also use frizzy lettuce. You want something with a bit of bite to you. You know, Rocket's got that peppery flavour. You want something like that. If you can keep it on the plate. Just sort through it and make sure you get some nice leaves, though. It's in the sun. It's died a bit, but also you need to take the end pieces off. And then we'll sprinkle that with the smallest amount of olive oil, just to liven it up a little. And on top of that, we're going to put a selection of these vegetables. So make sure you get the different varieties. Don't put them all together. You can see I've got the little brown speckles that I kept talking about. Try and keep them on the pile, though, Ian. They are hot, can I tell you? So it's not really a finger's job. <laughs> that one doesn't want to stay there, does it? All right, I'll change it. Make sure you've got a bit of a mound at the end, like that. And then, last but not least, we'll just sprinkle some of this lovely Harissa yogurt over the top. Not too much. You could serve some extra on the side. Just tidy up the plate a little, because I've made a mess. 
And that, my friends, is a beautiful vegetarian alternative. Kate's mother always says when life serves you lemons make lemonade and we're going to do just that today now to a saucepan we're going to add one cup of caster sugar along with one cup of water and the zest of two lemons Now I'd love to show you this really fantastic magic trick where I juggled 10 lemons, but I can't actually, so you're going to have to go and find somebody else to do that for you. Always wanted to juggle. Now we're going to bring that to the boil over a low heat, so all the sugar dissolves, and once the sugar has dissolved we're going to boil it for about a minute. Now while that's boiling we can juice our lemons, we need about a cup full of fresh lemon juice, and that will probably be about five or six lemons. Now, if you don't like the idea of lemonade, you could make orangeade or grapefruitade or even limeade. your lemon juice into a beautiful jug that should be about a cup along with a litre of cold water and to that we're going to add the now cooled syrup some people might like to strain the lemon zest out but I love to keep it in and put in as much mint as you like this is a wonderfully refreshing drink to have in the fridge. Oops, spilling there. Never mind. Cheers, Mrs. Langbrook. Thanks for the tip. in Italy, one of the guests at luncheon ordered garlic bread. I must admit, I sneered a little. You know, I was expecting that sort of slightly soggy stuff that we call it garlic bread. The host insisted it was real garlic bread. I'm going to try and recreate it because it was delicious. The first important thing is a good loaf of country bread, anything that's firm. And on a ridged grill or a barbecue, just paint it lightly with oil, but make sure it's pretty hot. If inside, make sure that your smoke alarm's turned off and just plop that on the top. Now the garlic, you know, forget this garlic butter, just some peeled cloves of garlic, cut them in half. You can get fancy designs if you like, you know, you can shape it different ways. I don't think you really need to. So when it's nice and golden, just take it off. Now with the garlic, with the cut sides, now this is your exercise for the day, you rub it very vigorously over the bread. You can see the bits. You don't want to break it up, but you do it both sides. You see what it has to be a firm loaf. And then the smallest amount of really good olive oil over the top. And that, my friends, is true blue garlic bread. If you'd like any recipes from today's show or tomorrow's Dish of the Day ingredients, call 1902 211 963. And don't forget, you can collect further Huey recipes and cooking tips from your weekly Buy Low and Newmark catalogues. Monday's Dish of the Day is brought to you by Maxwell & Williams, makers of fine table and ovenware. And here are the list of ingredients you'll need.
Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show just as much as we did. Bye for now.